this is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and we're playing Dr. Science today. Yes, we are. So what is this about? The iPhone 10 screen size. Not so much its quality, because it's not out yet. We can't say. We could make guesses about how good the AMOLED looks and how bright it is and all that sort of thing. That's not relevant. I only believe in talking about things I have in my hand, generally speaking. But screen size is something that we can deal with, and it's confused a lot of people, you know, whether we have the phone in hand or not, because Apple has provided metrics. We're going to have a little slideshow here, all sorts of information for you. Some people think that the iPhone 10 with its 5.8 inch display has a bigger physical screen than the iPhone Plus model, be it 7 Plus or 8 Plus. It does not. Physics only goes so far to allow that kind of thing to happen. What it is designed to be is a step up for you iPhone 7 or iPhone 8, even iPhone 6 people who always want something of a bigger screen, but you still don't want that humongous plus size phone. So it's kind of the Goldilocks principle, sort of, but not quite, because guess what? In one dimension, which is the width, the narrower dimension, you're still getting the same size screen as the iPhone 7, the iPhone 8. Here we have some Kodabi cases just to illustrate the point. The top one is for the iPhone 8. The next one is for the iPhone 10. Really not much bigger there. And then the plus, okay? It's not just about the bezels. And this is confusing. Why? Because we're used to things being usually the same aspect ratio, like 16, 16 by 9 has been a standard for phones lately and obviously for TVs. With TVs, it's always 16 by 9 aspect ratio, which is what broadcast TV is these days. Your movies on Netflix or your favorite streaming service, all that sort of thing. YouTube, which you're looking at right now, 16 by 9. So therefore, the height versus the width is always the same and you just buy it by screen size. A 32 inch TV, a 45 inch, a 55 inch, a 70 inch if you're a rich person. That's all been thrown out the window, starting with Samsung and LG when they came out with the really long, narrow phones. So your aspect ratio is thrown off. It's more like 21 by 9 or 21 by 10 or something like that. Apple's doing the same thing with the 10. So it sounds bigger when you say it's a 5.8 inch, but is it? So illustration number one, for those of you who still find this a confusing principle, we have a ruler right here. We have a piece of paper. Diagonally, this piece of paper measures about... Let me see if I can flatten it out. Ten and a half inches, okay? Because diagonal is kind of BS when it comes to the size of your screen. So if we fold this paper in half, obviously if you're buying a phone screen and you got something that was just half the size, right? You'd say, oh my God, I'm looking at a whole lot less. But diagonally speaking, we're going from ten and a half inches down to about nine, not that big a drop. So you see, that's where aspect ratio becomes important. For those of you who want the biggest screen possible to look at, it's still going to be the iPhone 8 Plus. And now for the quick slideshow portion, for those of you who say, I just don't believe you, Lisa, I believe Apple is wonderful, and even Samsung when they come out with these bigger screen phones. Well, here it is. This is Apple's developer site. And you can see right here, it shows you that in terms of width, 375 points identical between the iPhone 8 and the iPhone 10. You're not getting any wider in that aspect ratio. What you are gaining is about 20% along the top edge, which is pretty useless if you're watching 16 by 9 content, but will get you some more lines of text if you're looking at a web page, assuming you're holding it in the up and down vertical position and not horizontal. Horizontal, you're not getting any kind of win there. Next is another illustration from Paint Code App. They make an easy to create an iOS application one. And so you can see that they also have the dimensions and point sizes. And that's a very good visual indicator right there of the different sizes that you're dealing with between the three size of iPhones that are available. Lastly, resolution is not the same thing as screen size. That's why you can have a high resolution QHD phone, but only a 1080p TV that's obviously much bigger physically. So when we look at Apple's specs page, the consumer facing one, not the developer one, you'll see the pixels, the resolution are higher on the iPhone 10. It's getting it's higher resolution. For you people who are aware of how Apple does scaling, it's the same 3X in terms of image quality as on the iPhone plus model right there. So more pixels, yes, you can see how much pixels you're gaining versus that plus model. So there you have it. So hopefully now you understand the idea that the iPhone 10 is for those of you who had an iPhone 8 and want a little something bigger, but not something a lot bigger, but you want to get a little more screen real estate because you're just getting, in most cases, a little more screen real estate. Now you're getting that vibrant OLED and a different camera on the back with nice features. So you're getting other things there. There you go. And if you had an iPhone 
something plus model and you thought, well, the next step up is the iPhone 10 in terms of screen size. No, it's not. In terms of other features, yes, perhaps the 10 is going to be better in some ways, but not in terms of overall physical screen dimensions.